Hello and welcome to Midlands Today. On the day that one of Britain's best loved brands and most famous exports, Cadbury, is taken over by the American food firm Kraft. At first, Cadbury said they'd fight Kraft all the way and called their initial offer derisory. But last night, the tough nut crumbled and gave the go-ahead for a deal. Unions fear job losses and an end to the proud tradition of philanthropic values that this firm was built on 200 years ago. Crafts say those comments are unfounded. But the 2,000 staff who work here at this 24-hour operation and many more across the UK are tonight fearful for their futures. They've been talking to our correspondent, Peter Plisner. Good afternoon, I'm Suzanne Verdi. Memorials are taking place here in the UK and soon in New York to mark the 20th anniversary of the September the 11th terror attacks. Almost 3,000 people died when two planes crashed into the Twin Towers of the World Trade Center in New York. Another struck the Pentagon and a fourth crashed in the field in Pennsylvania when passengers fought back. In a message to the nation, President Joe Biden urged people to stay united. The Queen has also paid tribute, saying her thoughts and prayers remain with the victims, survivors and all the families who've been affected. James Webster reports. Well, earlier I spoke to John Rostill, the chief executive of the Worcestershire NHS Trust, which runs the Alexandra Hospital, and asked him what on earth was happening with standards of care there. Well, first of all, uh, let me reassure you... An action plan was drawn up, wasn't it, last year, July 2010, sort of ensuring um, things were put in place to make sure that malnutrition among elderly patients couldn't happen again. That action plan doesn't seem to have been put into action. Why is that? Well, uh, uh, it, 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 it's disappointing. You think you've cured it now, do you? Well... I have to say... Are your staff actually up to the job themselves? Are they actually capable of making the changes that are needed? And are you the right man to lead them in that way and to make sure they happen? Well, certainly, I think we've got the right staff well, now. Just a few minutes ago, I spoke to Assistant Chief Constable Sharon Rowe and asked her what the latest situation is. Yes, I still have a significant number of officers in Birmingham city centre. There is still outbreaks of violence, uh, looting of shops are still taking place. Arrests. OK, well, we have heard from our reporter who has been in the city centre for us this evening that she's seen uh, looting happening at many stores, one particularly Maplin's electrical store being looted. And she says she's seen officers just standing and watching the looters, well, make a grab for it and run off. W why would that be? Um, yes. Well, we have, um, we have also seen the looting going on on the CCTV cameras. Um, Can I ask you, why would your officers just be standing there watching? Surely they should be stopping them. Well, as you would have seen, it's holding public order lines. The officers progress and they move in and make an arrest when they witness offences. Yes, well, I caught up with the Prime Minister on his way to the Midlands this morning and I asked him how he feels about MPs bending, to put it politely, the rules. Well, I'm angry. I'm appalled. Uh, this is practice that should not happen. We saw yesterday on our programme a mum, Alison Edwards. She went to protest outside Parliament. She says she's struggling for any penalty she can get to look after her autistic son. She said, and I quote this, it's pretty strong stuff, Prime Minister. We're not happy with all that's, all that's been done. They should all be out, talking about all MPs. They're a disgrace to our nation. She pretty much sums up what most voters are thinking right now, I think. Well, well I, I understand the sentiment. We've got to do everything, as Alison says, to clean up, clean up uh, politics. That's what we've got to do. We started this week, big changes this week. It's been taken out of the hands of MPs. Now, Alison also, I want to be sure that she's getting all the benefits that she's entitled to for her artistic uh, son, and I will personally check up that that is the case. Well, we very much appreciate that. Help. Prime Minister, thanks very much indeed. Thank you. That was the Prime Minister speaking to me a little bit earlier, and uh, he mentioned Alison Edwards. We were talking, of course, about... Uh, her report yesterday that we saw her protesting outside Parliament and we spoke to her tonight and she's uh, given the Prime Minister's promises a cautious welcome, we have to say, but we have passed her details on to his office and we will let you know what happens with that. Now on BBC One, Suzanne Verdi joins the motorbike paramedics of the Midlands. Tonight's programme contains some flashing images. Tonight on Inside Out, putting their lives on the line for you. We've got exclusive access to the work of the West Midlands motorcycle paramedics. Just going to clean that wound up for you. Yeah.
we get a biker's eye view of one of the most difficult and dangerous jobs in the ambulance service. No, 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 no. Verbal abuse is, is very regular, and sometimes that then escalates into violence. Plus, how a seriously injured Iraq veteran is helping train medical teams in the Midlands. Cover the door, look out, look out! That's all on tonight's Inside Out. West Midlands Ambulance Service was the first in the country to put paramedics on motorbikes. Now they couldn't do without them. Bikes like these are playing a crucial role in one of the busiest times in the service's history. I grew up in multicultural Birmingham, the proud daughter of a white mum and Sikh dad. Half my family are Sikh, so I hear about what's going on in that community. And there's something that's got everybody talking. You come to meet an underage Sikh girl. Sorry, sorry. You come to meet an underage Sikh girl. A Sikh community group has begun hunting down suspected abusers. The disgusting paedophiles. And it claims the alleged abuse is racially motivated. Would you have done the same to a Pakistani girl? No. So why are some Sikhs hunting suspected paedophiles? And could they be doing more harm than good? You've got a colourful past, haven't you? Do you think you're the best person to be doing this kind of of work. The legendary Topple, of course. Now a new version of the world famous musical has hit a West End. And the man stepping into those well hallowed shoes is Andy Nyman and he joins me now. Oh, welcome to the studio. <laughs> Just as we were playing that clip, you got your fingers in your ears and you were saying, I can't listen to it, I can't I listen know. to it. Why is that? Well, because that's an iconic version that everyone... Now, she's just been crowned Miss London 2019. She now has her sights set on becoming Miss World. Incredibly, Vimbai Chapungu is the first black woman to win the Miss London title. Earlier this month, she also competed in the Miss England finals, reaching the top 25. Not bad, considering there were 20,000 applicants. And Vimbai is juggling all of this with studying for a master's degree, no less. And she's here now. Vimbai, welcome. Thank now, you. you're studying for a master's degree at the moment. You've already obviously got a degree as well. You're learning Swedish. Gosh, I don't know how you find the time to enter beauty pageants. What made you want to enter a beauty contest? So I was excited um, to know just how much uh, beauty pageants have changed. Some feminists may say, or some people generally may, may think, oh, it's a little bit demeaning doing that kind of thing when you've got brains anyway and we know you're beautiful. No, thank you. Um, yeah, absolutely. I think... We're here for a special screening of that new rom-com, Home Again, starring Reese Witherspoon and Michael Sheen. And it's not your average rom-com. Oh, no, it's not about young love. It's about a 40-something divorced mum of two and how she finds love with a much younger man. Here's a little taster. I don't know your ex, but he must be some kind of maniac. Well, a little earlier, I caught up with the star of the movie, Reese Witherspoon, and I asked her what attracted her to the role. I just thought the part was very well written, and I thought the idea of a woman at a crossroads in her life where she's trying to decide if the decisions she made at 25 were still applicable to her life at 40. Now, it's been written, directed, and, and produced by women. Is that an exciting thing for you? Did it bring a different vibe? It is. I think it's important that we have different perspectives on film. If we see the same stories coming out of the same 20 people who are all men, it's you just don't, society doesn't change. We don't have different conversations. Are you getting equal pay with men as leading ladies now, do you think? Uh, I'm not sure about everyone. I couldn't speak to everybody, but I definitely know that's a concern on a lot of people's minds. Because this is what I look like in shorts. <laughs> You see, <laughs> so it doesn't really. If you watch me go around the ring in small shorts, it's not a pretty sight. You do um, glow quite a lot on stage, don't you? And there's just towels galore, and you've even credited, I understand, your dry cleaner. Yeah, the, the Greek fellow. Yeah, he gives. He's given up now. My suits. <laughs> what have you done now? You ruin. You ruin a perfectly good suit. I get four of them made, and they last about a week. A week? Yeah, they just the seams start to pop off. Now, on a UK tour of Chicago, I've come to the Hippodrome Theatre in Birmingham to find out more about the man who first won the nation's hearts, aged just nine, with this chart topper. Jimmy, absolutely lovely to meet nice you. Nice to meet you. Pleasure. pleasure. 
Now, Thank I would you. say you've had the most brilliant career, but uh, I should say careers. I'm not that old yet. No, you're still having a <laughs> fabulous career. Careers. How do you fit it all in there? I think you just do one thing at a time, and you pick and Girls. choose. Yeah. I know. They're good, aren't they? Aren't they lovely? Yeah, Bears, she's made these for us. That's Ashley over there, just in case you want to know, and that's me in my blue dress. Yeah, out of balloons, if you can't It's lovely, it. balloons. Yeah, aren't they absolutely. fabulous? The Thank you very much indeed, Bears. astonishing, Beth. isn't it? Well, Full of hot air. <laughs> oh, thank you. Anyway, you were horrible. you one of the thousands of people who helped raise money for children in need by voting to see Ashley or Suzanne do their version of Strictly Come Dancing? Yeah, we've had a team counting your votes today. And now the nail-biting bit, that's for me and Ashley. Go on then, Nick, put us out of our misery. Hmm. And the winner is Suzanne. Oh. Well done. Well, you can Thank see you. her full dance routine in just a moment. First of all, we couldn't leave it without at least no. a glimpse of Ashley in full flow in his raunchy rumba. He looked lovely. If tomorrow never comes. Very, he's getting into it, wasn't he? Not sure what the weather's doing at all, Shafali, but the temperature's gone up in here, hasn't it? Yeah, with those tight trousers. <laughs> now to the moment we've all been waiting for, our very own Ginger Rogers. Oh, You've me. never seen her oh, before. A truly grief. and literally a blistering performance. This, ladies and gentlemen, is the very pinnacle of our programme, the climax, the oh, denouement, okay, okay. the finale. Okay, we get the message, don't we? Just before uh, you see it, I'd just like to say a very big thank you to everyone who raised money for children in need by taking the trouble to vote for Ashley and me. And, of course, thank you very much to our talented teachers and partners, Charlotte and Jamie. Hope you enjoy the dance. Yeah, you Good will. Night. Good night. <laughs> Every night while I'm undressing, saying my prayers and lightly confessing, I can hear hot licks from a set of drums upstairs. Every night on the dot, I can hear a tenor drum say, I've always loved the news. The pace of it really shapes my day, and sometimes your feet don't even touch the ground. After the programme, an enormous amount of calm, time to reflect, catching up on all the news I've missed. Get out and about, have a chat, meet your friends, and just relax. I'm passionate about this business, but I'm also passionate about theirs, actually. Not all of it, though, gets broadcast.